奉主耶稣基督的圣名，我们一起同心来敬拜我们的主。奉主耶稣基督的圣名，我哋一齐来敬拜我哋嘅主。哥罗西书第三章第十六节。哥罗西书第三章第十六节。当用各样的智慧。当用各样的智慧。把基督的道理丰丰富富的存在心里。把基督嘅道理丰丰富富地存在心里，用诗章、颂词、灵歌彼此教导。用诗章、颂词、灵歌彼此教导。心被恩感，歌颂神。心被恩感，歌颂神。下面让我们一起用诗歌来敬拜我们的主。下面让我哋一齐用诗歌嚟敬拜我哋嘅主。我哋一齐唱向荣耀三一神。弟兄姐妹们，让我们安静我们的心，一起用祷告来敬拜我们的主。弟兄姊妹们，让我哋安静我哋嘅心，一起用祷告嚟敬拜我哋嘅主。慈爱的天父，慈爱的天父，我们感谢赞美你。我哋感谢赞美你。你是我们的创造者和救赎者。你系我哋嘅创造者同埋救赎者。我们感谢你供应我们每日的需要。我哋感谢你供应我哋每一日嘅需要。感谢你在困难中不离不弃。感谢你喺困难中不离不弃。感谢你在生命中的带领。感谢你喺生命中嘅带领。赐给我们信心和力量。赐给我哋信心同埋力量。感谢你的爱深深包围着我们。感谢你嘅爱深深包围着我们。让我们无论在顺境或者逆境当中。让我哋无论喺顺境或者系逆境之中，都能感受到你的同在，都能感受到你嘅同在
，天父，天父，我们来到你的面前，我哋来到你嘅面前。为我们教会的合一献上我们的祷告。为我哋教会嘅合一献上我哋嘅祷告。求你用你的圣灵带领我们。求你用你嘅圣灵引导我哋。使我们在你的真理中同心合一。使我哋喺你嘅真理中同心合一。不论我们来自什么背景。无论我哋来自咩背景。文化。文化。或者语言。或者系语言。都能在你的爱中合而为一。都能喺你嘅爱中合而为一。主啊。主啊。让我们时刻记住，让我哋时刻记住，你是教会的主，你系教会嘅主，我们的一切都应为你的荣耀而存在，我哋嘅一切都系应该为你嘅荣耀而存在。我们也求你教导我们如何在生活中实际的追求合一，我哋也求你教导我哋如何喺生活中实际地追求合一，不只是言语中的合一，不单止系言语上嘅和谐。而是行动上的一致，而系行动上嘅一致。求你让让我们在困难和挑战中携手同行。求你让我哋喺困难同埋挑战中携手同行。在顺境中彼此扶持。喺顺境中彼此扶持。以恩慈、忍耐和爱彼此对待。以恩慈、忍耐同埋爱彼此对待。求你帮助我们成为和平的缔造者。求你帮助我哋成为和平嘅缔造者。争取共识。争取共识，化解冲突，化解冲突，彼此相爱，彼此相爱。亲爱的主啊，亲爱的主啊，我们要为教会中的年老者献上我们的感恩和祷告。我哋要为教会中年老嘅献上感恩同埋祷告。感谢你赐给这些年老者、年长者丰富的人生经历和智慧。感谢你赐俾我哋丰。佢哋豐富嘅人生經歷同埋智慧，你從不離棄他們，你從來不離棄佢哋。從年輕到年老，從年輕到年老，你的恩典始終與他們同在。你恩典始終與佢哋同在。求你繼續在他們的生命中彰顯你的信實和慈愛。求你繼續喺佢哋生命中顯明你嘅信實同埋慈愛。主啊，主啊，求你賜他們健康和平安。求你賜他們健康同埋平安。使他们在年老的日子里得享身体的力量和心灵的安慰。使他们喺年老嘅日子里边得到身体嘅力量同埋心灵嘅安慰。对于那些身体软弱的年长者，对于嗰啲身体软弱嘅年长者，愿你的医治之手临到他们。愿你医治之手临到佢哋。感清他们的痛苦。感清佢哋嘅痛苦。使他们得到安息和慰问。使佢哋得到安息同埋抚慰。我们也为他们的生活需要祷告。我哋亦为佢哋嘅生活需要祈祷。求你在物质上供应他们。求你喺物质上供应佢哋。派遣弟兄姐妹们去关怀扶持他们。派遣弟兄姊妹去关怀同埋扶持佢哋。愿他们在教会中找到温暖的归宿。愿佢哋喺教会中找到温暖嘅归宿。不感到孤单。不感到孤单。主啊。主啊，你是他们的力量和避难所。你系佢哋嘅力量同埋避难所。愿他们的年日充满你的恩典与平安。愿佢哋嘅年日充满你嘅恩典同埋平安。奉主耶稣基督的名祷告。奉主耶稣基督嘅名祷告。阿门。阿门。弟兄姐妹们，让我们遵从神的话语，一起来诵读主导文。弟兄姊妹，让我哋争取用诶、呃、一齐用诶嗰个嚟嘅。我们在天上的父，愿人都尊你的名为圣，愿你的国建立，愿你的旨意行在地上，如同行在天上。我们日用的饮食，今日赐给我们，免我们的债，如同我们免了人的债。不要我们遇见试探，救我们脱离凶恶。因为国度、权力、荣耀，全是你的，直到永远。阿门。下面让我们啊、呃，一同用起音的方式来诵读《生命圣诗》。下面让我哋一齐用起音的方式来读《生命圣诗》。今天起音的经文的题目是《传扬福音》。今日起音嘅系喺《传扬福音》。啊，我来读第一节，你们读第二节。我来读第一节，你哋读第二节。我们传扬他，是用诸般的智慧劝诫个人，教导个人，要把个人在基督里完完全全的引到神面前。要把个人在基督里完完全全的引到神面前。要把个人在基督里完完全全的引到神面前。要把个人在基督里完完全全的引到神面前。要把个人在基督里完完全全的引到神面前。要把个人
然而，人未曾信他，怎能求他呢？未曾听见他，怎能信他呢？没有传道的，怎能听见呢？若没有奉差遣，怎能传道呢？一切都是出于神，他借着基督使我们与他和好。又将劝人与他和好的职分赐给我们。他愿意万人得救，明白真道，因为只有一位神，在神和人中间，只有一位中宝。乃是降世为人的基督耶稣。下面，让我们一起继续用诗歌来敬拜我们的主。让我哋一齐嚟跟随耶稣
，弟兄姐妹们。下面啊，让我们一起来读圣经《哥罗西书》第一章九到二十三节。下面让我哋一齐嚟读实啊，圣经《哥罗西书》一章九至二十三节。我读奇数节，你们读偶数节。弟兄读单数，我哋读双数。因此，我们自从听见的日子，也就为你们不住的。祷告祈求，愿你们在一切属灵的智慧悟性上，满心知道神的旨意。照他荣耀的全能，得以在各样的力上加力。好叫你们凡事欢欢喜喜的忍耐宽容。他救了我们脱离黑暗的权势，把我们迁到他爱子的国里。爱子是那不能看见之神的像。是首生的，在一切被造的以先。他在万有之先。万有也靠他而立。因为父喜欢叫一切的丰盛在他里面居住。你们从前与神隔绝，因着恶行，心里与他为敌。只要你们在所信的道上恒心。根基稳固，坚定不移，不致被引动失去福音的盼望。这福音就是你们所听过的，也是全于普天下万人听的。我保罗也做了这福音的执事。愿神赐福遵守他话语的人，并且遵守他话语的人。下面我们请好牧师为我们证道。下面我哋请啊，开始后同我哋啊证道。今天好牧师带给我们的信息是，在他爱子的光中。今日好牧师为我哋带出嘅信息系，在他爱子的光中。好，有请好牧师。Good afternoon. 大家下午好。This afternoon we come to a passage that's Intensely focused on Jesus Christ. And our aim uh, this afternoon is to look at Him. To behold Jesus. Let me pray briefly before we begin. Our Father in heaven, we do pray that you will receive all glory in heaven and earth. Just as we have prayed and sung. And now, Father, we open your word. We ask that you speak to us. That you give us ears to hear what the Spirit says. 
人你俾我哋一個耳朵嚟到聽到你嘅聲聲嚟見到我。That you help us to behold more of the glory of your Son. So that he may make us more like himself. And we ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. A few weeks ago, I heard a Scottish pastor uh, say this. He said, "We find ourselves aware of stars only when we cannot see the sun." We are preoccupied with men only when our minds are turned away from God. And that is true. When the deeds of fallen man become our focus, then the darkness around us grows. And when Jesus Christ is not the visible center of His church, uh, the church suffers greatly. If we don't live in the light of Jesus, then we will labor for those things which cannot satisfy us. If we don't live in the light of the Son, Jesus the Son, life, uh, we will live for treasures that will soon disappear. And if we don't live in the life in the light of Jesus, then we will love things that will actually destroy us. And so this afternoon we will attempt to see the sun together. So as we set our gaze upon Jesus, the Son of God. What we see in these verses is that Jesus is the living hope of the church. He is our hope. The, our passage comes in the context of the prayer. We read the prayer in verses 9 uh, through 14. And that this prayer may be answered, we will focus our attention now on the picture of Jesus given from this verse 15 on. And the first thing we see in verse 15 is that Jesus is God. He is God with us. Jesus has always existed with God and the Holy Spirit and the Trinity. For all eternity, he has been with God. For all eternity, he has been God. And in the fullness of time, Jesus came to us as a man. The season is soon coming when we remember the shocking reality that, that God came to us as a man. But sadly, there's so much hype around the Christmas season. That it tends to make the, the glorious reality of God coming to us seem somehow trivial. But Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. God promised to come to us and to live among us. And he came. 
and we can't explain it with our reason. We would have never made up something like that. But it's the reality that God chose. He chose to come to us as a man. And Jesus came first to reveal God to us. He is the image of the invisible God. Image refers to an, an exact, exact representation. In, in all of his being, Jesus shows us exactly who God is. Hebrews 1 says he is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. In all that Jesus is, he reveals the true God. In his character, in his attributes, in his words and his deeds, in his living, and in his dying. Jesus shows us who God really is. And this should amaze, should amaze us. That the eternal God would want us to know him. And that he would send his only son to come so that we may know the true and living God. We can add nothing to God. We have nothing that he needs. He's been perfectly happy for eternity. And yet, he wants us to know him. And he, con he, he humbles himself to come so that we may behold God and see who he is and become his. And Jesus also came to assume the highest position on earth. It says here, Jesus is the firstborn of all creation. This refers to Jesus' position above all things. It does not speak of his origin. How he came. But it speaks of his position. God made a promise in Psalm 89. He said, I will make him the firstborn, the yeah. highest of the kings of earth. The firstborn is the, of creation is the one who is the heir of all creation. God has given his son, Jesus, author, all authority over the earth. And so Jesus left his glory in heaven in order to receive the highest position on earth. And God made Jesus the king of all kings, past, present, and future. And he gave him all authority in heaven and in earth. And he did this so that we may see and know God. And so that seeing him, we may become like him. We 
So Jesus is God. So Jesus is God. And there is no other. None like him. Secondly, in verses 16 and 17, we see that Jesus is our creator. That Jesus created all things. And he created us. We see two things here. Jesus is the source of all things. When God created, Jesus was the agent of creation. So that God created all things through his Son. God was there ordaining and designing all things. And the Holy Spirit was there empowering and fulfilling all things. But it was Jesus the Son who was using words to speak into creation all that is. And he created all things out of nothing. And so everything we can see was created by Jesus. And when we see them, we see something of the wisdom and the knowledge of Jesus. We see the beauty and the power and care of God. And Jesus created all the things that we shall never see. Whether it's the wildflowers on the top of a high mountain, or whether it's those things which are invisible to human eyes. You're told he created all things visible and invisible. And he created all earthly and spiritual powers. All the kings and rulers of the earth are there because Jesus put them there. And all the authorities in heavenly places are there because Jesus created them. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through Jesus. He created everything by his word. We're told here that he is the sustainer of all things. That he, he holds all things together by his word. Hebrews 1 says he upholds the universe by the word of his power. Just the words of Jesus have more power than all of the other power in the earth put together. So he creates by his word. He keeps things together by his word. And the scriptures tell us one day Jesus will speak another word. Peter tells us when he speaks that word, the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on them will be exposed. And that's good news for all of God's people. But we also see in these two verses that Jesus created all things for himself. He created them for God. 
We look at our universe and we see so many of the colors of the universe. We see the deepest blues and the most vibrant greens. The brightest yellow and the glowing orange. We see the royal purples and the deep crimson red. And we know that Jesus created all these. And we hear the sounds around us. And we should marvel that Jesus created all sounds. The soft pitter patter of a light rain. And the thundering blasts of the nearest lightning. The screaming cry of a hungry baby. And the tender laugh of a little child. The sounds of birds and animals. Of rivers and oceans. The sounds of the deepest night and the brightest day. The Lord Jesus made them all. He made all things, whether they're heavy or light, whether they're strong or frail, whether they're smooth or rough, or shiny or dull. The Lord Jesus created all of them. From the tallest, from the smallest atom, to the largest star, Jesus made them all. And we get to enjoy all of these things. We can marvel at them even when we go for a simple walk in the fall woods. But though we get to enjoy them, Jesus created them for the pleasure of God. He created them for the purposes of God. He created them for himself. And oh, how we benefit because Jesus made them all. Thirdly, we see that Jesus is our King. Jesus is the King of God's people. He is the head of his church. All authority is given to Jesus by his Father. So that he's higher than ever, every king that has ever been or ever will be. That God has given to his beloved son the greatest kingdom that will ever reign on earth. The New Testament calls this kingdom the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven. The church. She is the new Israel. She is the people of God. And Jesus is her king. Her head. Her Lord. As, as her head, Jesus leads his church. He speaks to his church. And by his word, Jesus leads her in the way that is good and sweet. By his commands, he lights her path. 
By his truth, he strengthens his church so that she may have rest in weary days. And through the storms of life, his promises carry her. And in every temptation, his scriptures warn and guard her. As her head, Jesus protects his church. He keeps guard over every sheep of his flock. So that, so that not one of them can ever be taken away. He protects her from the devil. From the world. From the power of sin. And even from her own weaknesses. He is her refuge in every trial. He is her rock through the shifting sands of this present world. And as her head, Jesus rules the church. He is her great king. The only loving king who rules in perfect uh, goodness. His great wisdom is matched by his unfailing compassion. His, his perfect justice meets his tender kindness. He carries out the strictest discipline with the deepest love. Jesus always acts always and only acts for his greatest glory. And at the same time acts for the greatest good of all his sins. There's no ruler like Jesus. There's none like him. The world could wish for a king like Jesus. But they would never want him. For Jesus is a righteous king. And his righteousness condemns the world. Oh, but not his church. His church sees his righteousness. And indeed, his righteousness brings grief, griefs upon his church when we walk in sin. But his righteousness brings true repentance to his children. So that they come back to him. Jesus is a ruler who richly supplies all his people with all that they need. And he calls them to give him themselves and all that they have. Jesus is the only king who can make this promise in Luke 12. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. And at the same time, with no contradiction, he can also say this. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. When Jesus promises good gifts, and when he calls us to give ourselves away, we want nothing more than to obey him. 
Because Jesus is the great king. And the head of all his people. There's no other king like Jesus. How, are, how blessed are all whom God has delivered from the domain of darkness. And transferred to the kingdom of his beloved son. And then in the last few verses we see that Jesus is our redeemer. Jesus is the redeemer of his beloved church. <laughs> Everything we can say about Jesus in, in all of his attributes are glorious beyond words. But the most precious reality to the Christian is to say that Jesus is my redeemer. We can say a lot about Jesus. And we can believe those things are true. But we cannot experience them as true if we do not know Jesus as our Redeemer. Until or unless we come to know Jesus as our Redeemer by faith alone. Then whatever we say about Jesus remain merely words. In verse 14, we see the language of redemption. In God's Son, we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Redemption points to a debt that we owe to God. It is the debt of our sin. It's a debt so great that we could never repay it. We were destined to pay that debt in an eternal hell. For, for our rebellion against an infinitely holy God demands an infinitely valuable payment. Verse 21 describes what we were. We were alienated from God. Far away from Him. Cut off from Him. We were hostile to God in all of our thoughts. We were hostile to God in all of our evil deeds. And because we did not believe in Him, all of our deeds were evil. For Scripture says, whatever does not come from faith is sin. And sin is rebellion against God. Most of us never thought of ourselves as enemies of God before we knew Christ. But God says that we were his enemies. Romans 5 says, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. We are so used to sin that it doesn't seem so terrible and horrifying. But it is. In the Bible, we see we were like terrorists lobbing grenades at God with every sin that we committed. Apart from Christ, we were at war with God. 
If you remain apart from Christ, you are at war with him still. And that's the horrible reality of sin. But by his amazing grace, God had a plan to reconcile sinners to himself. God made a way for rebels at war with God to have everlasting peace with God. And he fulfilled his plan. He sent his own son, Jesus. The one who is God and the creator of all things. The one who is our true king. Jesus, God, came to pay our debt. The very same debt that deserved God's eternal judgment. And Jesus took that debt as his own debt. And he went to the cross. And there on the cross, God laid our sins upon his son. The sinless son of God, the only man who had no sin debt of his own. Yet he died to pay our debt. There on the cross, Jesus bore our shame. There Jesus suffered for our sins. There he shed his blood for the enemies of God. There he was pierced for our iniquities. And there on the cross, Jesus, our God, died. There could be no peace for God's enemies until Jesus was nailed to the cross by his Father at Calvary. And in this way, we are told Jesus made peace with sinners by the blood of his cross. In this way, God reconciled us to himself through the death of his son. How we need God to give us eyes to see. Jesus as Jesus our Redeemer as he should be seen. Two things keep us from seeing his glory clearly. The first is that we can't see how unspeakably great our own sin is. We can't see that how great the magnitude of our offenses are against a holy God. We cannot comprehend the judgment that we deserve. We cannot feel the, the proper grief and shame for our sins. So the second reason is that we cannot see the glory of God's holiness. We cannot see how perfect his character is. Nor the beauty of his perfect love. Nor the splendor of his perfect righteousness. Or the greatness of his perfect justice. And the eyes of our heart and hearts are closed to the loveliness of Jesus. 
So if only our eyes could rightly see Jesus. If only we could rightly see our own sin. And see the holiness of God. Then we would cry out to Jesus. How can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? How can it be that I should gain an interest in my Savior's blood? How can it be that Jesus bled for Adam's helpless race? How can it be that your mercy found out me? How can it be that now there is no condemnation that I dread? Only because Jesus is a great redeemer. Only because Jesus has redeemed his beloved church. Every morning, the first thought in our hearts and minds should be <laughs> Jesus has redeemed me. Glory be to Jesus. So then, brothers and sisters, this is our hope. For all, in, for all who are in Christ, we have a great hope. Because Jesus is our God. He is God with us. He is our creator who made us in love. He is our head and our great king who rules us in love. Jesus is our blessed Redeemer, who has delivered us out of our sins and brought us to the true and living God. If God, by His grace, will allow us to see Jesus, our Redeemer, more truly, then we will be changed people. Then we'll, we will be a changed church. We will live our days and our years for His glory. We will walk, as verse 10 said, in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him. And we will live in such harmony with one another. In submission to Christ Jesus, that together we may with one voice glorify God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the will of God. And that's the promise of God. And that's what God wants for each of us. And that's what God wants for us together as a church. To behold the glory of His Son so that we may be like Him and that we may glorify Him and that we may enjoy all of His love and goodness. So may God give us grace to behold Jesus and may he give us grace to walk in a manner worthy of him. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, even looking to Jesus, we see how great our sin is. Forgive us for low, self-exalting thoughts. Forgive us for watching the world and living like the world. Just 
Turn our eyes to Jesus. Help us to see him each day. And help us to follow him. To live like him by faith. Cleanse us and sanctify us. Make us more and more like Jesus. So that his love and his grace will be in our hearts. So that we will love you first and most. And then love our brothers and sisters. So that when the world sees your church loving one another, they may give glory to you. Through Jesus Christ. Amen。我們多謝牧師的信息。
hồi chút nữa bow together for the benediction <clears throat> now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing so that the power of the Holy Spirit in you may abound in hope may the God of peace give you peace and be with you all through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen Thank Tina 牧者还有行政会祷告黄牧师每一个月会在我们教会做一次主日的正道如果有需要的话如果教会以后聘请的年轻的国语部的牧师黄牧师也愿意为新的牧师提供指导如果教会以后聘请到年轻的国语部的牧师他就愿意为这个牧师来做服务黄牧师是从十一月一号开始在我们